Welcome back to Raid Guides in a Trench Coat featuring Pandemonium 12 Savage. Phase 1. Athena. I knew you were Trumbo! when you walked in. <laughs> Athena is finally here, and oh boy, I can see where La Habrea gets it from. I'd go world ending psychotic crazy too. You'd think that Athena would be a lot more affectionate towards us since the Warrior of Light is the embodiment of light and Athena is a moth. But instead of goth mommies, gaming has been giving us a lot of moth mommies as of late and I want to know where the breakdown in communication was. I don't want a return or an exchange, I just want to know. The marker dance for phase 1 is pretty tame but the mental gymnastics to rotate them when the mechanic comes does take a fair amount of getting used to. You'll have an off-kilter ball clock spot where that clock spot is rotationally center relative, which is just a fancy way of saying, never the fucking same. You'll also get a partner and a rotationally center relative half-room partner stack spot on top of that, but we'll talk more about those mechanics when we get there. So first mechanic in, we've already found a way to completely trivialize it. Instead of splitting up into light parties and baiting lasers as was intended, in Paradigma 1 you send the tanks and their invuln cooldowns off to be sacrificial lambs instead of learning a mechanic that is, frankly, infinitely proggable. I know it's been hard to find melees this tier, but if two GCDs and a true north cooldown is causing you to miss the damage check, then I don't know that those are the melees you want joining your phase 2 learning parties anyway. So in practice, the party finder standard is to use the lazy lasers strategy, where the tanks invuln through both of the laser blasts while I, the altruistic fizz range player, drag a laser to the south and take it all by myself as the tanks do all of the heavy lifting. Kind of like those car shopping carts where the child gets to steer around the store so that their muscle memory behind the wheel drives up their 16 year old insurance prices. Anyways, the lasers hurt but so do the half room cleaves that the boss is going to be casting based on the hidden 15th wishes inscribed on her wings. Now in normal this is easy because you'll see the lit up symbols and just avoid that side in sequence, but here in Savage you have to pay attention to the order in which the wings come out, and Para 1 will always be a bottom to top pattern. This indicates that Athena is going to spin around for the second part of the cast and invert which side she hits. So they light up as right, left, left, she's going to hit right, right, left. She lit up right, left, right, stay on the left side for the whole time as you experience a lazy pattern lazy lasers. Once your healers spend every ounce of their mitt to make sure the tanks don't die to auto attacks after their nothing happened moment, Paradigma 2 sets us up to learn about the light and dark buffs while simultaneously showing us which players forced Animal 2 progs to drag on for literal weeks. Four players will get the easy job of tether stretching and the other four players get tower debuffs and are forced to play four dimensional chess with biblically inaccurate angels. The tether players just need to take their tether and stretch it out to the other side of the boss's hitbox while the tower players fight to drop an appropriately opposite colored tower next to each tether. Because of how the tower debuffs distribute themselves, supports will always prioritize the first spot they can take starting northeast and going clockwise, while the DPS will always prioritize northwest going counterclockwise. If your tether players move fast, you can watch them as they move, but more often than not, while they slide past your greed up time, you'll have to look at the complete opposite side of the arena and try and parse what the angel tethers are going to be. Drop your tower on the way mark, and then we turn back to the tether players who get beamed by their laser before they wiggle into the towers that were dropped for them. Soak the tower and then look to the north side angels which will keep a jump with you to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. or to the left of your platform. This will then be followed by some tank stuff and then we hit the point where half of the marker dance starts to come into play. Super Chain Theory starts out by taking our center relative rotated clock and ball spots and plastering them at one of the four intercardinals. Athena then displays two of her four Super Chain Theories with the options being Birds of a Feather flock close together, Free as a Bird, kill two birds with one stone, and chicken out. Not sure why she's so interested in birds, but with all this feather imagery, I can't wait to fight Bird Athena in Phase 2. Based on whichever combination of theories she uses will inform where you need to stand using Athena's position as your relative north. Purple means stack with your partner, orange means stack alone. Blue is safe inside of the chain's starting radius, green is safe outside of it. I'll be honest, as a phase range I crutch the chains in starting position, so I have no idea how melees do this mechanic without getting themselves clipped because I sure as fuck would use it to more The second spot will be inside of whichever ball is getting the blue theory, and you'll be splitting up into two groups based on if your laser, tower, or general aspect buff is white or red, light or dark. 
Now the colloquial mnemonic for this mechanic is light, left, red, right, but light and right also rhyme, which nobody thought out, and I can't speak for how your prog will go, but I'm sure you'll make that mistake at least two or three times, especially now that I've planted that seed into your fallible mind. To add insult to injury, the light laser debuff actually does go to the right because the laser should be stacking with the wrong groups to purposely alter the debuffs or something, but you don't need to understand what's happening with that idea to just stand where you're supposed to. Now if you've done that part correctly, there'll be one more set of in-outs where either the DPS gets the mechanic or the supports do because those tower and beam debuffs will be entirely on one of those two groups. Following the second in-out, the tower people need to go to the two cardinal waymarks that match the same side you went to for the second grouping laser. This is to say that the white tower goes to the left and the red tower goes to the right. After the towers drop, the lasers need to wiggle into their towers, but if you were already within the tower's confines when it dropped, then it's going to be really hard to mask your mistake when the tower goes on near black box and wipes everybody. Additionally, the lasers should use the same ass backward priority from the second set of theories, so light is right and red is not. And messing that up will give you similar run resetting explosions. As for the other four players, do the in out mechanic and then just get far away. There are rough spots for this, but so long as you aren't standing by anybody and haven't gone too far out into the boonies that you miss out on heals, you'll survive this all in time for another trinity of souls that can start being either bottom to top or top to bottom, so pay attention. Then you'll either get a Dialogos, parry the Dialogos, or Apodialogos. Parry Dialogos will have the tanks parrying Athena's attack as the rest of the party stacks outside of the hitbox, where Apodialogos does the opposite and follows the hit Rebecca Black song Friday because you go party. deal with a raid wide and then, besides getting blamed for not using all the resources they need to burn to survive every mechanic up to this point, the supports have the easier half of the next mechanic, Paradigma 3. On the support end of things, one player gets an X, one player gets a plus, and the other two players get towers. All the support players need to soak these other elegant looking towers based on which buff they have. X always takes the southmost, plus always takes the northmost, but healers have static tower spots where healer 1 will always take the left and healer 2 will always take the right and the tanks have some kind of convoluted priority flowchart to tell them which tower they should be soaking. The DPS will all get lighter dark tethers and just need to stretch them out. If you can stand across from your angel without walking onto the marked platform, you're a straight tether, otherwise you're going to need to do the Ghostbusters thing and cross the beams. Huddle up near the upper or lower edge of the platform as far as you need to get your tether to even out. With the aid of you in these spots, half of the platforms will disappear while eating anything on them and jump in becomes disabled so you won't be able to correct a wrong placement unless you get a pixel perfect on Avant or Hell's Ingress which is way harder than just learning the mechanic outright. On the support side, after the elegant soak, the plus hides in the outer corner and the X snags the inner wall. Once their line AOEs telegraph themselves, these players need to cast Vicious Mockery via proximity and insult the baby angels into casting the lasers in their general direction. Meanwhile, the people with the tower debuff will have a priority system of their own. If the two DPS sharing a platform with you had tethers that were different from your tower debuff, then you drop your tower somewhere in the middle of the platform where you aren't going to get sniped by the DPS lasers when they go off. If your buff is the same as their tethers were, then you have to run to the center of the arena beneath the boss so that you can sneak a corner of your tower onto the other platform. When in doubt, if both tower people go center, someone might be able to Venn diagram themselves to satisfy both towers and trade their res for a chance to prog the next mechanic. For DPS, you're either dealing with towers or lasers. If someone dropped a tower in the middle of your platform, odds are that means that your straight tether player needs to take the outer tower and your cross tether player needs to rush in to get the teeny tiny sliver of overlap that your support left for you. Shuffle awkwardly with your platform partner and pray that you have enough time to be indecisive after you both run to the inner platform tower. If you aren't dealing with the towers, then shuffle over to deal with the lasers and just try not to clip anybody. Everyone then needs to use their self heals to get through the raid wide because there's no way the two healers could reach everybody throughout all of that and then it's off to a burst window followed by limit cut. We talk about walls in progging a lot, but I cannot express that P12S's limit cut goes so far beyond being a wall that it's practically a fucking well-funded border protection agency. If you didn't spend at least three hours studying this video as a visa, then there's no way that a the border patrol na is letting you in to see phase two. Which is a shame because this limit cut, in theory, is super simple. Bait attacks with a partner twice, and take a laser. Hell, that's even less steps than P9S because you can always get two baits and a laser here instead of having to flip a coin to see if you're getting two little circles at a known time or a big circle at an unknown one. Everyone gets a dice marker above their head and wherever Athena plants herself is the new relative north for this encounter. One and three go due south, two and four go north by north by ever so slightly northeast so that they're just out of the way of her initial dash line before wiggling back into it, six and eight hug the southeast wall, and five and seven stand somewhere in the middle of the northwest. 
Every dash will need to go the full length of the arena or else someone is going to get randomly clipped by an invisible AoE. Similarly, each dash leaves behind some of Dobby's blue flames, so continue to rotate clockwise with your partner, but only go ever so slightly out of the puddle or else you're going to cover so much of the ground in fire that you'll inadvertently close the pool. Once you and your partner are both taking your assigned two dashes, switch out with the other pair on your side of the arena so that they can do the same. Meanwhile, everyone has to pay attention to these little angels that pop up like groundhogs in the middle which either cast two lasers that hit harder than a semi-truck with a cut brake line, or a little fake-out AoE in the center of the arena. The problem here is that the lasers do need to be taken in a specific order or else someone is going to end up with a vuln whilst they take a limit cut dash, and that just tends to flip a switch in Athena that ends up wiping the run. The order in which you need to take them in is 5, 7, 6, 8, 1, 3, 2, 4. Although that being said, you could also express this as 7, 5, 6, 8, 3, 1, 4, 2, because you're technically taking them in pairs, but that's starting to get into semantics. As much as they say that the larger number should walk further to the left, they never do. The other problem is that, because they need to be taken in order, and it's seemingly random whether the angel in the middle will cast their range LB3 or their caster 1, there might be a time where you're presenting your bare ass to be slapped for an uncomfortably long amount of time before they actually bless you with their lasers. Technically, if you have an eidetic memory, I think the colors that the angels jump up in during the burst window is telling you the order in which they'll come down, with the purple being AoE and the yellow being lasers, but if you have an eidetic memory, then you're probably already proficient in this mechanic and don't need to waste time waiting for the pace bin slave fizz range to hit their macro key. Resolve all the lasers and dashes, wait for the flames to go away, and then huddle up on the A-way mark for some more beefy raid wides while THE WORLD SHALL TRUMBLE! At this point, hold your burst window. Unless you're a reaper who physically can't edge yourself any more than you already do without boiling over, it is in everyone's best interest to not be trying to do your complicated as shit damage rotation while avoiding the clusterfuck that is Super Chain Theory 2A. For this mechanic, you once again have the three pit stops that you're making like in Super Chain Theory 1, except now you're towing the center line of the arena to dodge the trinity of souls cleaves that occur at each pit stop. You'll either start south or north, go middle, and then go south or north again. Sometimes you go to all three spots, and sometimes you end up doubling back. In either case, the first cleave will always be a purple combo, so you have to squish your partner's stacks to all fit in one half of the arena before your healer 2 pops sprint to bum rush the middle for the very unforgiving second strike. Be on the appropriate side of a mothwing pattern and then figure out where you have to go third. There will also be a protein or partners associated with the third location, but it happens after the Trinity of Souls cast and you can spread out comfortably so long as nobody got flipped. Because if they did, that's going to be a lot of swift casts. But assuming you get through that, now is the time, while you wait for 2B, that you can finally stop edging yourself and burst. Use a pot, because boy howdy, even with a good chunk of 658s, this damage check is tight with all the mechanics you fucked up. Pay attention for the partying, partying. and then you're off to the final mechanic. Super Chain Theory 2B is another mechanic in which you'll yell at your poor fizz range for dashing away instead of casting Peloton on you when you miss your mark despite Peloton not working while you're in combat. It's always been Expedience, it has never been Peloton. Anyhow, finish out your pot window and then watch all the different pairs of things appear on the field. Group up in the first donut, lean towards the side with the partner Protean, and then take mental note on if you're going far north or far south at the end. The first day we will go off, then you'll want to dodge far because Athena's going to cast some happy trail down the center of the arena that'll feel a little bit more like a trail of tears. Then, wiggle into the partner Protean spots. Find the angels in the north and avoid getting hit by their lasers, which seem to have taken a page out of that McDonald's supersize new movie as they've become massive. Find the final partner Protean spot and try not to clip anybody else, and then 7 of the 8 platforms are going to get tethered to. Stand on the untethered platform and unleash the rest of your kit. Take a raid wide, take another raid wide, and assuming you get her down to 0.1%, then. Wait, those aren't feathers. This isn't a bird? <sighs> I've read enough of Reddit to know where this is going. Well, joke's on you. You don't get any loot, and you just have to get ready to prog pan Genesis, beat hours and hours and hours of Para 3 prog in between. Go watch a real guide.